What's up, everybody? How's it going? Hey, Thanks for checking out the channel. Oh, look at it. It's Chuck is here, too. Uh, I'm Ham Radio Dude. One second. There we go. A little bit better there. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and uh, thanks for being here, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, we're doing this Wednesday thing now, or I'm doing this Wednesday thing, and Chuck said he'd uh, come along and help. And we're going to kind of talk about uh, gonna talk about the NFEDs today. Somebody had asked a few weeks ago in the chat if we could build an NFED on, on the stream, and I thought it was a good idea. And it so happens that it's kind of falling at the right time to talk about NFEDs, right, Chuck? <laughs> Sure. Sounds like a great time to talk about it. It, it does. And so, um, I don't know. What do you got there, Chuck? Support my new shirt there. What do you think? Yeah, it is a nice shirt. That came pretty quick, too. You ordered it, what, Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Not bad. Well, Sunday? It, yeah. Something like that. They were on special. It's the wrong color. They wanted a dark, dark green or gray. It's, it's actually gray. It looks green in the screen, but. Uh, sure. Well, that's cool. Ten bucks. I'm like, well, I've got to buy one. Yeah, I've got something. Um, you want me to show mine? Please. Let's see if we can get this to focus. I'll look at that. Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me put you on the full screen there real quick. So, Boom. one afternoon, <laughs> dude and I sat in front of our computers and designed this up. Yeah. This guy you know. there. There's the back of it. This Oops, is sorry, actually. Let me put you back on. Tell you the truth, mine is mine is an old version. We've upgraded it since then. Um, and uh, Duke can show you on his. I'm printing one right now, but uh, what uh, you, the version you have, uh, and I think we could explain it as we go along. It, it had uh, it had the support post going the wrong way. Is that right? No, no, no. It just doesn't have all the holes in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same way. So, so Chuck, Ape, Tio, and myself, we've been we've been kind of toying around with this idea of an NFED and seeing what we could do. Uh, and, and I should also mention that the one that I'm going to show you and build today is, is not an official product by any means. Uh, we're just kind of still piecing together things and finding out what works best. But with that, we're going to do a 49 to 1 uh, NFED here today, and we're going to use a T140-43 toroid. And Chuck and I, uh, we, had, we had a couple of uh, discussions about the power that you should be able to put out on a T140-43. Mm -hmm. You got me out uh, by myself still. Oh, sorry about that. Well, I guess they didn't see me giving them the finger. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the, the discussion was, is uh, I've been doing parks on the air all week. It's been very uh, relaxing. And by the way, thank you, everybody, for uh, a lot of the kind words. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute or two here before we get started. But, um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of parks on the air this week. And so I started testing it at, you know, 5 watts and then 10 watts. And I worked up to 100 watts. And I was seeing that at 100 watts, I was I was starting to see that standing wave ratio rise. And when you start to see that, that means that the that means that the the, the toroid isn't capable essentially of doing its job anymore. Um, uh, and you said that you had no problem running it at 100 watts on voice sideband. Um, right. So I was curious of how you wrap your your toroid, and uh, there could be a difference there in how I wrap my toroid versus you. Uh, the, the amount of primary turns and whatnot, I think could have an effect on the maximum output power. Uh, are you familiar with that at all? Um, I just did mine the way. I, actually, mine was off of an, it was actually on another antenna and I just moved it over. But it oh, cool. was from one of my builds. It was from the build I did for the 100 watt one. And I, I've had no problems in 100 watts. So I don't know. I, I am using a little bit thicker magnet wire than you, but I don't really think that makes a huge difference. Sure. And so today I'm going to use today I'm going to use 20 gauge magnet wire today. And uh, so once the product's done, you should be with an NFED of 49 to 1. The way we're going to do it, you're capable of four bands without a tuner. And I've tested them on all four bands and it's been pretty good. I mean, I made contacts on on all four bands. It was a uh, uh, excuse me, 40, 20, stop uh, 15 and 10. Uh, I lost it for a second there. I was like, yeah, for 15 and 10. And I was making contacts left and right. In fact, Spotter, if he's in the chat, he could attest to it. He says, what were you running out there? Because that's uh, that's the strongest I've ever had a signal come into my 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 house. <laughs> and I was like, there's nothing you know, remarkable about it, uh, but it was fun. So um, 
I think we'll get started here in a couple minutes or a couple seconds. I just want to give a huge shout out to everybody. Uh, we're not going to do a 64 to 1 today, but we could in the future. Uh, I do think next week we'll probably do a die poll. And then the week following that, I'll do a villain. And that way, we're just covering our basis on everything, I suppose. Um, yeah. So, again, guys, thank you very much for all your support. You know, it's been a pretty interesting week. Uh, and we'll get started as soon as I'm done here. But um, thank you, Christiana. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm doing really good, and uh, I, I appreciate the kind words that, that you just – here, let me put it up on the screen here. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll tell you this. Um, y you know, my video, uh, maybe a bit of a, a harsh reaction to what had occurred last week on stream, and then we don't need to, to discuss it, right, because I'll, I'll, I'll certainly get stuck in the negativity. But what I'll say is that my video had a lot of positive critiques, a lot of support. I appreciate it. It also had a lot of negative critiques in a positive way, meaning people were like, hey, maybe this isn't the best way to handle it. Have you considered this, this, and this? And uh, I appreciate all, all the, uh, even the negative critiques that were, you know, with a positive attitude. I appreciate that. So uh, there will be a time when I make videos again. I just, uh, just, I got to take care of me first and make sure that I'm in a uh, stable place where when I say stable place, I mean a, a place where uh, I don't lose focus of what the end goal is, you know, and uh, so thank you guys all. I appreciate it. Um, let me go ahead and pull up or do this real quick. There we go. So we have a couple of things I want to show you today, and let me just make sure that you're still on screen too, Chuck. Yeah, you are. Okay. So this is uh, something that Chuck and I and Ape and T.O. had, had kind of been toying with the, the, the idea of a design. And uh, it actually works really cool. When you have your wire wound up and you're on streaming the wire, you could hold it right here or around here. And it'll just do, 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 and it'll un unwind pretty smoothly. So it's kind of cool. Uh, place for a BNC connector. And then we added... Uh, quite a few holes and you'll see why you could actually tie it to a tree. You could use elastic wire. You could put a little, what do you call it? A carabiner. Yep. You could put a carabiner on there. And then we made a couple of holes for, you know, if you have a toroid in here, you could actually use zip ties to hold your toroid down. But Chuck has come up with a better solution and Chuck, uh, you want to show yours again real quick? Oh yeah. Chuck's solution is, uh, battery heat shrink and uh, he's able to heat shrink it into place and it stays in a place pretty well uh, another thing this, you're going to see it this oh, go stuff ahead. is really i've never used this battery heat shrink before it's it, it, it on the back here where it's really nice and smooth it was like wrinkled and stuff and you just keep heating it up and it just keeps shrinking and yeah and i mean that's that's as good as it probably needed to be another half inch longer maybe it would be nice but uh it actually is good to have some cooling out of there also you don't want and i and i went with this green well it was what i could find was the right size but i went with the green more to be uh, a lighter color than black because that will in the sun they will heat up in the in the sun also and so that's the note i want to make and and i know i'm on the small screen right now but you could see i used electrical tape and i'll tell you right now when this thing heated up at, a, at 100 watts uh, that tape started to get really soft, and I imagine that when I take this off, it's going to be all sorts of sticky and gooey. Um, but with with it, I think that the the, the battery uh, heat shrink was probably the better idea. Chuck, if you pull yours up one more time, there's another thing I want to kind of point out, and you'll see it on mine too. You're going to see these three holes right here on my screen, and then Chuck has them on his right, your left. Um, yes, they're they're it, in here. And what these holes are for is, uh, so when you put your antenna wire through here to connect to the toroid, uh, these acts as a, as, as almost a, uh, what do you want to call it? A, a relief, a, a, a strain, strain relief. relief. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, a strain we'll, we'll relief have. and then it'll come out right. Uh, that won't focus. And I apologize, but it'll come out right there. So, you know, there's a little bit of thought in there. I think it's kind of a cool idea. I might be able to see mine. I think what we'll do today is we're going to get into wrapping the toroid, kind of explaining me, how to go ahead and, I was going to say the the thing I've had with a lot of the ones that are made that are already, you know, like kits or whatever, where they, everything's on this one, isn't a, it, the wire comes out this end and your coax comes out this end. Everything's in a straight line. So when you put it out there, you can hang it or whatever. And it's just going to sit there, excuse me, like that. Yeah. And, and the, the coax will come out 
and the wire goes out the other side. So there's nothing off the side. I, that's something I don't like. Uh, it doesn't come out the bottom. Just, just my, my, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Anal retention stuff, I guess. Yeah. No, I, I understand. I like stuff to be a nice straight line. I was a, I was a carpenter, man. It's, everything's got to be straight and plumb, right? Yeah, I, for sure. And this isn't even the final design of this. Speaking of straight and plumb, there's a couple of small modifications we're going to have to make to, to kind of make it smooth. Uh, I put up a local host as a message and, and not because of the likes or anything, but I wanted to thank him. Uh, local host lives near me. And this morning I was having problems with my 3D printer and I wanted to get these 3D printed for the stream. And, uh, of course, you know, that's when your 3D printer breaks and it just doesn't work. So I was like, uh, local host, could you, could you do me a square? <laughs> and he, uh, he had it printed in a couple of hours. So thank you. Oh, Appreciate really? He it. printed those out? He printed this one. I printed the one we're going to use today. And the only reason I'm going to do it is because blue is a little bit easier to see on the eyes. Um, so, and you could tell the difference in quality between a good printer and uh and an ender right but hey but uh we'll get started with the mine, toroid right mine came out pretty good i don't know if you can tell but... well let's see here i'm gonna put you on the full screen because the first step yeah, i'm gonna have I to do really is really see it because i got everything the wind on there what i did on the wind on these uh what i found out and i think due to the same thing is i marked the center of my wire so i wrap it i wrap it in a figure eight to the center and then switch it over to the other side on from after that Mm -hmm. So this this is the this is the end of it here, and this is the first part of it here. Yeah, and uh, mine mine's not exactly how it would be if I built one on it because I like I said I it came off of my other one, and I ended up breaking the other uh, winder. This, these winders are fairly thick; they're almost quarter inch thick. We didn't we didn't go for super K six A R K light. We went for you know this is this is to take on potas and stuff. I mean, I, use I, I I'll yeah. take this. I'll take this on a soda too. So this is printed in PLA. I think our idea in the future is we're TPU or ABS. Uh, but this is Mine's... printed with forty percent infill as well. So it, it's held up to the parks on the air all week as well as I took it to California, Chuck, and we used it out there. Yeah, mine's ABS actually. Oh, yours is ABS. Well, yeah, I'm it's, I'm it's, a step it's, behind. <laughs> it's pretty. Well, that's what I had in the printer. I hate changing this stuff. I forget I what I'm Dota gonna... was. Uh, what was I Dota, John? Driveways we, on the air. We, driveways on the air. That's right. Perfect. Uh, so the first, at those. the first thing I have here is this this T one forty forty three toroid, and that's what we'll use. Now you could use something bigger, like a T two forty forty three, but the problem is, is then we would have had to like really just make a. <laughs> we would have had to increase the size of this dramatically, and so we're we're just at the T one forty forty three at the moment, and we're going to wrap it with our magnet wire. And again, this is twenty gauge magnet wire. Um, I got about 28 inches here, and the thing is, is right now I have to go do some some turns. I, I'm I'm going to do this, and I'm going to turn this. But I have a vice over there, and I'm going to put it in the vice so I get some nice tight turns. While I do that, I'm going to put Chuck on the full screen, and I'm going to ask you in the chat if you've all ever used an NFED half wave. Have yeah, you ever plugged? People, have you ever how many plugged? People in? have used it. Go ahead. Yeah, how many people have used it? Uh, with one in the chat for that. And have you ever plugged in directly to your radio from the BNC? Uh, or do you use coax? There's a reason I asked that. And I'll be right back. And ours is kind of designed with a little bit of coax or you have to use a... Uh, actually, no, this is the uh, this is the newer style. He has the old style there. This is the new style where it sticks out. So you can... Except it's the wrong end. So you have to have a adapter. But I... I always use a little short piece of coax anyhow. So um, nobody's used one, huh? Or, or they hasn't started yet. One in, one in the chat if you've used an infed half wave. I've only used mine with coax. Yeah, wild cascade. That's, it's, I think five or six feet of coax is actually a good thing, personally. I know they'll work otherwise, but uh, let's see. Uh, somebody's 1,500 watts into his. That was Don, of course, Don. It's it's not made with a 140. That's for sure, Don. <laughs> um, and dude had problems with his heating up. I I don't know if you guys saw my video when I was up camping up at uh, Bowman Lake. I ran for at least an hour that night, no problem, 100 watts the whole time. So I don't know what is going on. Um, 
It should it should take a hundred watts. Then that now that's side bin. That's not that's not FT eight or anything or or, or CW. Um, I do have my setup for for uh, my portable setup now for uh, FT eight. One of these days I'll do it portable. See, here's what I did. Get set up. Um, Kinda. It's it's not the best in the world, but it it does a job right there. So I just I twisted to... it for a few inches, and this might be a little too long. And then here I I'm gonna cut this right here. Um, I I basically looped it and twisted it, and then I'm gonna cut this right here for later. Um, and I'm gonna get starting to uh, wrap my toroid. Now uh, I will just post a link here. Wolfpack dot uh, com or linuxwolfpack.com actually has a really good write up on NFed Halfwave. Yeah, and, Mike says he's used one once, only once. Mike uh, K six K eight MRD, he's used one one time. Sounds like an NFED. Yeah, only once. It sounds like. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The guy uses oh. them all the time. <laughs> no, I was like, what? Uh, he did say that, but uh, I think he was, I think he was jesting. I think he Joking. was joshing us a little bit, right? I do think so. <laughs> all right. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to work backwards. I'm gonna work backwards, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna work around the primary here. So I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go under. What gauge did I tell you I used? Uh, you said I think sixteen or eighteen. Yeah. So basically, I have these first two turns, and we know they're two turns because we count the turns on the toroid internally. So there's one, two, four, fourteen gauge. 14 um, gauge. Oh. Sarcasm. Mine so sarcasm after too, Mike. after that second turn, I'm just going to, whatever I, I twisted here, I'm just going to kind of untwist that, right? And then I'm going to continue on here with my, my toroid. Sorry if that's not the greatest there. But we want to do seven wraps total here, and we'll get this tight as we go along or as tight as we can. And the reason I'm not using uh, this 16 gauge that I had is this was a pain to wrap. I don't know how you did it. Patience. Me? I, yeah. I don't know. It's it, it came out pretty good too. I was surprised. It's, it's pretty hard to use, but it works. I think I did a couple of them. Maybe it might have been the second one I did, so that usually helps. I try to pull it through and then try to bend it right at the edge there. Right there. To get it tight. And then... Uh, mm-hmm. Just don't pull it so hard that you pull any of the, uh, the coating off or anything. And I've had that happen because you know you, the the nice thing about magnet wire is it's coated, right? So yeah, those little fifties are are hard to do with the wire. That little twenty six gauge wire oh. is really easy. Yeah, it's the firefighter fingers. So I got one, but, two, three, four turns right now, and this one actually is a little bit bent, which for the sake of the stream, try to keep them straight. But uh, we'll just keep going. Ape uses 14, too. He's, he copied me. That's where he came from. <laughs> See, we I got was, 59 watching. Thank you all for being I, I, here. I think I was the first one to use 14, and then Ape copied it. Just saying. No, I'm sure somebody's used it better, bigger than that, even. I use one gauge on these, these small toroids. <laughs> yeah. One time through. Yeah. One. So uh, we've uh, we've both have tested these. I don't know. I don't know if Ape's tested. Has Ape tested one yet? Ape. I don't know the answer to that. I think he's got one printing now. I mean, there's there's nothing there's nothing different about the about the the winding and stuff like that. It's just a regular crossover, forty nine to one. It's just the we just designed our own our own winder, which was basically designed the way we we wanted it, and not. Well, it was, yeah, it was really cool, wasn't it? The way we sat down oh, yeah. and, and we literally, we got on a conference call and Chuck was oh. like, it should be this and it should be that. And you know how I'd never listen to Chuck. I was listening to Chuck. <laughs> he was and I was like, all right, but tell I was me, listening Chuck. to you too. Cause you were looking, yeah. he's, he's a way better with the, uh, what was the, what were we using? Oh, uh, we were yeah. using Tinkercad actually, yeah, which Tinkercad. we should have been using fusion 360, but yeah, it's okay. I'm not so that here, fast with it. And dude is pretty fast with that stuff. And so, yeah, I would, it was kind of like, I would have an want? idea. He goes, I would have an idea. And he go, oh, I know how to do that. <laughs> I go perfect because I don't. So we got uh, one. That one is not tight. You want to try to keep them tight against the toroid, right? 
Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven now. And now for our eighth turn, it's going to be, we're going to go over the outside. I guess this is like the, the quote unquote hardest part, right? Over the outside. And then we're going to bring it down. Across the other side, through the hole. Oh, that's oh. that's for doing the uh, bowling, huh? Sorry. And best, then best knot ever is a figure eight, guys. Strongest knot there is. Figure eight. I don't know. Way if better I can than see a So I, I went over on the outside. Yeah. Here where my finger is, and now I'm going uh, down you, under and you bringing can bring it back yours around up on the big screen if you want. Make me small. I don't care. Sure, sure. I see if I can remember how to do that. It's been a while. Here there we you go. go. So, uh, so over, under, and then that's, this is technically the eighth turn right here, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, six more to go. So what's going to happen here is, is this easy? Any of you guys thought that, you know, everybody dreads doing tow rides and I, I, I did too. They're, they're really not that hard. I mean, I mean, me and me and Duke can do it. Mike can do it. I think Mike's done some, haven't you, Mike? It's there. It's just it's intimidating until you've done a couple, and then after that, it's it's nothing. And what I'll say is, um, both Ape and I have done videos about how to test a toroid after you wind it to yeah. check to see if it's going to be uh, resonant. So uh, a forty-nine to one would have twenty-four fifty ohms or twenty-four hundred fifty ohms, and you could actually use resistors. Uh, what would you call it? Not daisy chain, but link link the resistors um, from the ground to the. Is it the ground? No, oh, uh, I, from I the don't antenna. Ever test, I don't the ever antenna, test mine. Yeah, the antenna portion to the SL239 or BNC. And you should then have 50 ohms. Uh, of course, you don't need to have 2,450 uh, ohms worth of resistors. You could do it with anything as long as the math is calculated right. But we both did videos on it. And uh, yeah, really then. If you're sure that it's it's going to be fine, then you wire it up and you go try to poda it up. Yeah, Don says the uh, the Torres windings that To does on his little, you know, the one with like that one right. he did had it was like it go one direction, didn't it go like different directions and stuff. Or something? It was weird. Yeah, yeah they those can be, are, they can and be they tricky. Were, they were really small too, with a lot of windings. But uh, hey, it's the hardest part's counting them sometimes. I tore one apart one time because I thought I had it wrong, and then I was like, oh, it wasn't wrong. And uh, that's fun because then it kind of, you got to try and get it back the same. I don't so, any wire. Here's going to be another hot debate while we're doing this here. Joe Brett's uh, in the house tonight. Did you see what's that? What's up, JB? What's up, Joe Brett? I tried to talk to him last night, but I couldn't get through. Um, Here's the next debate question. Do you use a counterpoise on your infed half weight? Why or why not? <laughs> and how I much do, power? I don't. Um, I do on a nine to one though, but not, I know. And, and Nape's going to pop in here. He's going to say, you got, you got, he's going to say, son, what are you doing? If you don't use it, son, Bigfoot's going to come get you. So it's, actually, it's I think, I think that the, the elephant in the room will be this right here. Uh, so I have my eighth, and then this will be 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I, I actually did one too many. And if I did one too many, what would happen is it would be uh, it would it would be lower impedance values than I'd want, right? So then I wouldn't really be resonant on 40 meters, 20 meters, and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just take that out here, and we're just going to double check that. What I do is I'm going to space these out evenly or as evenly as possible. Um, and then we'll talk about it. So, uh, I got my first two, which are twisted. And then mm -hmm. this wire is just going to sit right here. And I got these two that are twisted that are just going to go right here for a moment. Uh, and then let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that should be good right there. Right. And this is where the fun kind of starts to occur. Now we're going to use the blue guy today. And bas basically what's going to happen is, is, is I kind of already have it set up in a way here where you're going to see this is going to go into the uh, BNC connector and we're going to solder it in there. I should turn my soldering iron on. Uh oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh oh, there oh, we go. And the other thing, um, and do may do this, but we also thought about putting a, we're going to, we're, we're going to actually include something to put like a, a ground lug on it also. 
Boom. Right. So you Boom. can run it if you want to. Oh, you do then, have your side. Yeah, and again, the nice thing about these holes right here is fit, uh, you could put a ground lug on there if you want. Right? Although I don't know that that's the right size screw. Yeah, they'll fit a they'll fit a ground lug in there. It, I think it, I think an eight number. Uh, it'll number yeah eight number eight thirty two. And I yeah. I used a six today, but eight thirty two will fit right in. It's screwed. Um, it actually will thread right in also, which is nice, so it won't fall out. Let's see here. What do we have here in the chat for uh, no poise? No poise. Got a couple no poises. Uh, I'm need that, thinking. CS says need that. He didn't put sun down. I can't believe it. But uh, now, when uh, Dude and I were at Pacificon, I, I was sitting next to uh, Adam's buddy, Dan. Dan is a big QRP guy that does a lot of soda work. He's a, he, and he does mainly um, CW, and he said you needed six foot of coax. This was his suggestion. And then he also said it needed to be just a little bit off the ground, contrary to what uh, I've heard in the past, where it should be I'm, close to the ground. I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I ran two configurations this week. I, I ran one in a sloper pattern, which was kind of close to the ground. And then I had one that was coming down from that flag pole, or the fishing pole, the guitar mm -hmm. pole, and I, I put it over the tree and down for that extra height instead of sloping, and it performed way better that way, and the standing wave ratio was lower. So real quick, uh, what I'm going to do now is basically I'm going to have this here, so I'm going to cut off probably until right about here and here, and then I'm going to sand down right in here on mm -hmm. both of these, and then we'll worry about this in just a few minutes. So let's see this again here. And you can always cut more off if you need to, so leave it long if you have to. And in fact, I'm actually going to go out to here so we could do the uh, so we could do the ground lug for the purpose of this tutorial. Mm -hmm. And then here, okay. Yeah, Mike says he doesn't use a, a counterpoise either. I I never have. I've I've actually hooked one up I, at one time on one of my antennas, and I I will say that SWR was no different, but I can't say that it wasn't better or worse. I'm just going to cut this one here for now too. It's uh, I'm cutting it long intentionally, but I wanted to get some of that out of the way so I had some room to work. Yeah, we and, got one uh, person agreeing with um, with Ape. Just just Don's the only one, so we know Ape's wrong now. <laughs> I don't oh, know. Don's sorry. usually right. No, I know Don's right. Don's usually right. I was just uh, giving and, Don the bag time. You know, I I guess see. Now, see, so Mike, what is it? Oh, go ahead. Sounds like Mike uses coax. He uses it. See, that's so when you use the coax, it does kind of use the the uh, the shield as your counterpoise, also. And that's what Dan was saying. Six feet. He was talking only six feet because he's a well, he's a QRP guy, so he doesn't want to carry a bunch of it. And I think he had really short piece. It was all connected to his antenna, I think, actually. So when he rolled it up, it was it was ready to go. Maybe not. No, 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 it wasn't. I take that back. No, he had he had the piece of the uh, the 316 stuff. Six 316 stuff. Coax. Oh, yeah, the RG316. Okay. Um, I'll say this. I was using no coax and no counterpoise. But this my radio seemed to do okay, one. but I don't want to say that's right. What do you got there, Chuck? Sorry. This is the 316. I oh yeah, like a fifty footer of it or something like that. So basically, this magnet wire, just so everybody's aware, the magnet wire is is a it's an insulator, right? So if you were just to try to solder this on without sanding it down or, or stripping some of that insulator, mm -hmm. you can uh, burn you, it off too. You could Sorry. you could burn it off, um, but you you're probably going to lose some connectivity. Um, to here's was what right. I minus fourteen gauge. If that's what he was asking, I'm I'm going to try something new today, Chuck. Okay. Okay, hey, so it's your radio, man. Yeah, well, it's nothing. Uh, so whereas before I might just solder this on, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to put this in here so we can put it into the ground lug. Um, but before I do that, also now I think we're getting to this point where I'm going to want to put a capacitor in, in line. What's going to happen here is if you run a 49 to one without uh, this capacitor here, the 100 PF capacitor, right? 
you're going to have this issue where you know, maybe your standing wave ratio isn't really exactly two to one or less. It's maybe a little bit higher. In, uh, in like, the higher bands, I think. Uh, yeah, in the higher bands. And like I think 20 and 15 especially. But uh, putting the capacitor in line really helps with that. So we're going to we're going to put one end of the capacitor into here into this uh this what we're going to call the ground lug and the other end of the capacitor is going to go into uh, the bnc connector with this uh with this magnet wire here and i'm going to flip that real quick so there we go so don says i need 160 meter infed halfway connected to the top of my tower you know what don my first when i was i was only a ham for like a year or so and uh my buddy and i went out and did field day and I'm like, oh, I got the antenna. Don't worry. We, so we took out a uh, an 80, 80, 10, my antennas. <laughs> that was so hard to try and put up portable. It was so freaking long. Um, so I don't, I don't do that anymore. If I'm going to do 80, I'll, uh, I'll use a nine to one. They, they seem to work better with shorter wire for that. Oh, I almost just spilled my water. I'm sure you heard that. Speaking of that, let's take a water break. It's about seven thirty-one here, and water break. We're gonna be, we're gonna or be. If uh, you have something better. Yeah, drink it if you got it. Smoke them if you got them. Oh, I'm gonna crimp this and then put solder on here, just to hold it into place slightly. Yeah, Don, I have that eighty ten. It's it's a monster though. If you try to put it up uh, when you're out portable, it's just too much wire. And so let's talk about wire for a minute, Chuck. While I'm mm -hmm. crimping this off screen. Uh, I mean, de undebatably, in my opinion, but probably, probably debatably, uh, silicon wire on these end feds is great, right? Actually, yeah, the, uh, they can be a little bit shorter than, uh, this is poly stealth. Uh, it's, it's really strong, really thin. I'm not, I like it as far as those two things go, but I don't like it because it has memory and, uh. Right. That uh, that silicone wire just it just feeds off like crazy. In fact, you got to make sure you get it tight, and it doesn't have a memory in it. When you get done, it's nice and straight. I mean, unless you do something really like tie a knot in it or something. I will say this: um, that I've silicone never wire. Broke it. I've never the broke silic one. the silicone wire is uh, definitely its velocity factor. It's it's going to be shorter, right? Oh, and yeah. uh, I still do sixty five feet. And then, like we did at your house, I just cut it down, uh, slightly oh, cut yeah, it down. But then I fold it over. Because I sent you that antenna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was I, the... before I checked that they were. It was different because I, I this poly stealth, the, the way I make the antenna, sixty four feet is perfect. Yeah, this is not. It's about. Right, it's like sixty sixty one feet in the. Um, I don't think we measured it. We just we just hooked it up to mine and, and measured it that way. But I think the best reason for folding it over, cutting it slightly, but folding it over is then if let, let's say you go from 40 meters to 10 meters and for some reason it's slightly off, mm -hmm. you know, that, that good tour pole is so lightweight, you just take it down and then you could, the way I have it now, it's almost like uh, you could pull it and it tightens, almost like a noose, mm -hmm. you know, probably a bad example. But Don says he used the poly stealth on his spark bug wire. That was a pretty cool antenna that Mike and uh, Scott did the other night. That thing worked pretty good, it seemed like. I mean, infed is an infed. Um, it's just a kind of a cool way to make it. Now, I was at uh, HRO one day, um, and they had Poly Stealth, but it was different. I think it's a different brand, but it was called Poly Stealth, and it seemed more pliable, like the silicone wire. So I'm going to check some of that out one of these days. So, like, one of the things I see here is I cut this uh, not short enough. You know, I I was pretty well determined to cut it. Sh short enough but not too short but now it's mm -hmm. not short enough because i can't really fit it right here and i could probably bend this but of course you probably don't want to see what cut, i'm saying cut, it's, the, cut that thing cut yeah it. i'm gonna have to cut it with that too though i think that was my last uh, uh -oh. hmm. did you no it's it? okay I, I got one downstairs i crimped it i got one downstairs that's not a big deal i'll run and go get it but that's a hey this is the perfect example and why we do it live too is i did say right measured uh, measure once, cut twice. No, I'm just. Yeah, it's always it's always better to be a little too long. <laughs> right. I'll I'll take it. That's cool. Uh, same thing here with my with this part right here. So you guys don't fit 
for uh, don't forget thirty minutes ham nation. With, uh, yeah, right. HRCC tonight. It just popped up here. Thirty minutes from now. What I'll do is I'm going to do Actually, this. It's I'm going to less gonna... than thirty minutes. It's twenty five minutes. My things. My YouTube's slow. I'm going to actually, all right, so that's going to go here. We kind of got that in place, and then we're going to put that right about here. Bill says she's drilling a new hole. It could do that, too. Yeah. Should print a new hole, but hey. Uh, we're still we're, st we're still playing with these things, Bill. Um, there may be more holes in it later. Who knows? Or less, yeah. Or less, you know, and yeah. That was the thing about the holes, too, is we didn't want to sacrifice the structural integrity of this device. Um, so we, we thought they were well placed, but <laughs> let me see if I yeah. can find one here. Yeah, no problem. So let me go ahead and sand this down again. Yeah, if, if he finds one, maybe he could like send it to me like over the over the internet. Oh no, I was I was talking about something else. So ah. when dude and I it, it snowed here when dude was here up in the mountains, and that's where we went to do our poda and our soda. Yeah. And and uh, Ape had sent me these really nice little QRP. I use these for QRP. And they worked fine <laughs> in the summertime. It just snapped in pieces uh, in the cold weather. This is, I think, this is PLA. I'm gonna go get that okay in the summertime. Not okay in the freezing cold, guys. There it is. It's it's a cool little uh, winder though, and, and the poly stealth fits better. That's the one thing I do like about the poly stealth. It's a little bit thinner. Now, uh, Adam is using this. Um, Teflon stuff he's buying off of AliExpress, which I tried to I tried to look some up on AliExpress, but it was all in Chinese. The, the I don't know how he must read Chinese, and because uh, the link he gave me was all in Chinese, I couldn't figure out what I was getting. I, I didn't want to buy it, but uh, yeah, this was off a of Thingiverse bill. This one was, I think, I I, I found it in uh, eight. This is before I had my printer, eight printed it up for me. I I, I really like them for. My little micro antenna, the, the little three ounce one I have, but uh, it's just not very good in the cold weather. And I, it it might be if it was an ABS, maybe it would be better. But uh, I think he's back. Yeah, I um, I you found know, a few more. You did print the wrong one? Did I? Which why? <laughs> look at mine. Look at your connector and look at my connector. I'm having a hard time seeing it. Oh, I did print the wrong one. But I don't remember one of us having one of those with holes in it. No, you have the wrong one. Oh, this is the original one. That's that's right. the original one. I Let's talk like about that real quick. Let I me like talk about that myself. here real quick. I'm gonna put that on the solo layout. Explain that, Chuck. Well, this was the first one we did, and Ape thought that the pressure on it, if we went the other way with the, uh, you can't see it on mine, but the um, the parts that go down to brace it. Um, he thought it'd be strong the other way. I, I think this would be strong enough, and I, I prefer this one. If you are going to try and hook it to your radio pretty direct, this is better. But, uh, yeah, we did. We changed it because now the pressure will be pulling that way, which it is probably stronger that way. Dude right, broke one, but he broke it because he tried to break it. So Yeah, and uh, that P, I was uh, only at that point, I think, printing at 20% infill. So, you know, well, that could have been part of it too. A couple of things there add up. Yeah. Let's see here. All right, I'm going to crimp this again, and God forbid, because this is the last one. Yeah, yeah, Don, I, those were on th Thingiverse. I found I found them, and I, I can't find them anymore. I have a file for you. Do you? Not well, exactly got... the same, but. Uh, I, I actually like, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna make some like this only bigger for my uh, I, I want some with just with nothing on it, just the holes. Sure, I'm gonna Stop. try to solder this would, again. That would be for my moxin. Hey Don, I got my 15 meter wire set up for my moxin. I haven't tried it yet. Is that winder on Thingiverse? You know, uh, as soon as uh, we're done here, I see if I can't pull it up because if it wasn't on Thingiverse, there's another website I can't remember. Um. It's like all 3D print.com or something. If Dan's still uh, in the chat. Yeah, Bill, which are you talking about? This one or the orange one? Ours is not on thingy. Version. Yeah, ours, ours is not on there. All right, very good. All right. So let's just do this real quick. 
Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Sorry, I'm doing a little soldering off screen, but it's kind of hard. Uh, it's kind of hard to uh, to do it all on screen, if you know what I mean. And see right there, it's probably a little short, but we'll make it work for today. All right, cool. All I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this through here. I got a lock washer as well. I probably should have got something else in line here. I don't know, is it Locust? Is that? Is, I don't know how you say his, but uh, he might have some pointers on that. He was talking about the infill on parts of it. KMAC just put out one right in the middle. Did you get it? Uh, it'll work for now. Uh, ideally, I just went too short that time, too. So, like I said, cut once. I mean, measure once, cut twice. So our idea... idea and our idea on these things is we're going to we're going to make a kit and you make it yourself. We're not going to make them for you. Right. I think ideally too we would get different um different ring connectors here cuz these ring connectors are really cheap. Oh. Well, I got them at like Harbor Freight or something, right? Good Don, I, Don, I don't know if I've read that you can't put multiple wires, but I'm going to try and prove that wrong on the Moxon. And I only tell Don this because Don loves the Moxon also. So it's a great antenna. And dude, dude likes them now too. He's going to try and figure out how to hook one up on his, uh, his umbrella in his house. Yeah. I was thinking about it on my patio. There's just an umbrella on my patio and, uh, making it work. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. It's going to be a tight fit. You see that? There we go. Come on. And then, of course, I got it in there, though. Look, it's in there. No problem. All right. Let me solder that's, this off screen. I'll be right that's, back. That's, you can hit, me, hit me up so Lucas can see my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. You're going to you see it in there. You're going to go here. Boom. See the capacitors in there. It worked just fine. But I got those firefighter fingers, though, so. And uh, again, sorry, I'm off screen with the soldering. <laughs> you can go back. Uh, yeah, give me a minute. So I, I did cut it too short this time, and, and obviously I'm going to have a little bit of struggle now, but we'll make it work. Yeah, Don, I've seen them, so I know that must work. The hard part's getting the feed lines. I think I have that figured out too. If I have to print something for that. I'm actually printing a winder right now, to tell you the truth. Am I the only one who bites solder or puts solder in my mouth? It's not lead. It's not lead. You got you got the new stuff, huh? Yeah. I used to have some of that old Radio Shack lead stuff, but I don't know where it went. I yeah. think my dad stole it. All right. I don't know that I'm going to be able to push this down. I'm going to try to do it carefully, but I already think that I'm going to lose my wind on this side here. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, Don, if you have any info, we should chat, but I'm going to do a, I'm, I'm going to try and do it like they do the um, hex beams. I mean, it should work. It's basically the same thing as a hex beam, really. Similar, I should say. Not the same. Sorry, I'll change the screen back in a minute. I got my hands full at the second here. I'll show you what I'm doing when I change the screen back. I'm just zip tying it together now. All right, you got you got like 15 minutes, man. No pressure. Yeah, we're you're, good. You're almost done though. I am, and I'm sorry I'm not doing as much as I should on screen. Uh, again, make sure you cut it the right length because I'm kind of forcing it at this point. Um, but here, let me go back to the big screen. So, uh, chat again, thanks. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Uh, like I said, this is kind of like one of those things where, um, I will tell you straight up and people, people try to call me out on it and I'm cool with that. Um, I don't know everything. Uh, we're kind of just learning things along the way in life. Right. And so if there's a better way to do something that you saw here today, I, I like, uh, I like input, you know, I could, I could handle input. Um, let us know, you know, better the hobby, better, better people's learning experience. But, but uh, sorry about that. I thought I was on screen. So for example, 
You know what I found? What's that? <laughs> Don't zoom in too close. No. Every time, I, every time I do overhead, it's like you can zoom in later if you're. I mean, not not for this, but Chuck, I don't like your constructive criticism. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that wasn't funny, was it? Well, it's different for <laughs> it's different for live, but when you're when you're editing later, it's way easier just to bring it in. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. And then, and so. Go ahead, I did not even I did not even use that with mine with this this tape, but but my wire is right. the wire is a little stiffer, so I have to run this thing through the ringer tomorrow. Who are you meeting up with tomorrow? Me? Yeah. Oh, you mean for Poda? Yeah, you got a group of guys tomorrow. They're calling for snow. No rain tomorrow. Snow the next well, day. You've you've, you've poted in the snow before. That's no big deal. Yeah, I know. I don't of course necessarily it wasn't, prefer to. Well, actually, it did snow that day, though. A little honest. That's right. another video I got to get out. Dang it. Okay, so a couple of points and things I noticed now that I just did wrong, and that's cool. Uh, this should have been on this side. You know, I was just not thinking, uh, and it would have fit yeah. a lot better. <laughs> Hold on, let me fix it because the OCD will come out. i tell you the truth. You don't even, unless you're going to take, I mean... Well, this was a this was a last minute uh, thought just to do it to show people how it how it could be done, um, because I don't use the counterpoise and I know again that might spark some debate, but I don't use the counterpoise, so you know what's the point here? You see much better. It's and if anybody said that in the chat, sorry everybody, I uh, I'm really focused actually surprisingly today, um, so you know then you get a ring terminal and there's your counterpoise right. What uh, so that? what's in the camera there where right here yeah what is that this is another camera yeah i don't have a lot of room at the moment oh. uh so so the camera's like right it's kind of in the, it's in the view whatever it is oh, oh i'm well. sorry yeah, yeah yeah i'll move it up here so anyway there you go so you got your counterpoise into the, your capacitor okay so again the double wire went onto the ground lug the mm -hmm. ground lug is your counterpoise, and then your capacitor 100 PF goes into your B and C connector. Also going into your B and C connector is the other end of when you were double wrapped, uh, one single wire came out here, and that also goes in the B and C connector. Did you solder and that already? Did I solder it? Yeah. Okay. And then now this is where if you had your antenna wire, okay, you would string it through this hole right here and then it comes up and then down and then up and then you could solder these two together or you know i was toying with the idea of these are really kind of big but using these like little connectors here mm. to uh but those are kind of big um but you could just solder these two together and then essentially all you do at that point is uh we'll test it but also tape it right or use your battery connector as well What's up, Chuck? You got to look on your face. I was just looking. I just I just ran mine through. I soldered it right there, but mine was not. I had to break mine because I had to cut the wire off. I'm going so. to come back on the big screen here. Hold on. All right. So then let's go ahead and go here. And I think realistically, that's about it. I mean, that's how you would build yourself a a, a forty nine to one end fed. Um, of course, you know, you could test it. There's videos on Abe's channel as well as mine. I should turn the soldering iron off um, on how to test it. And then mm -hmm. go out and, and check your standing wave ratio. I mean, it works It works well. Now, I start around 64, 65 feet, depending on the wire. If you're Right. So if, if you're using a wire other than what we've used, I'd do 65 feet. Yeah, start again, you could always cut like back, right? Now, I suppose if you wanted to go to like 80 meters, you can get 100 and, what is it, 131 feet? Is it 131 yeah, feet? About 130, yeah. 130 feet. And then as I was just showing you guys on screen and women on screen, you could uh, you could use this in between 65 feet and 60 Five one, so that way, yeah. if you don't want to use eighty meters, you could just disconnect it. I learned this from Adam K six A R K. Yeah. Um, but then basically, you'd you'd have the ability to to quick connect or well, that's the wrong way, quick connect or disconnect uh, the eighty meter length oh, as yeah. well. Well, Don's so. saying one hundred thirty five. I I think it's actually a right. Or it depends on the wire. About I think mine was about one hundred thirty three feet. 
six and six, twelve. Yeah, somewhere right around there. But y'all get the point. Yeah. So, you know, that's uh, cool. Let's see. Wish I could have been part of this build. I printed and built a nine to one project similar to this. Yeah, the nine to one is, is fun. I found the 49 to one a lot easier to build than a nine to one. Mm-hmm. Um, the three wires keeping them keeping them separated as you, you twist it. Not not a horrible idea. Well, but my uh, antenna says 130 feet for theirs is what they, what it comes with. Okay, so finally got you my log, dude. Uh, KD2 SXD sounds familiar. Actually, I, I was it yesterday. It was either yesterday or the day before. Uh, I made 113 contacts on that antenna on this one yesterday in an hour and 20 minutes. I don't know if that's spectacular, but I thought it was fun. <laughs> that's all that matters, right? Yeah, you know, you know what I'm going to build next is a. Um... I'm going to build one of those trapped. It's probably going to be trapped for 20 and then do 40. I, Dan was telling me about that. That's the Dan that we met at uh, Pacific on. He, uh, yeah. He, he, I guess you could shorten your wire up a little bit by, by doing the traps. Oh, sure. I missed the, I missed sure. the trap. I missed the trap uh, bill with the guys. You missed the, yeah, you did. Cause I designed I, uh, a 3D printable. Oh, yeah. Let me look up that, that wire winder, too, while we're, we're, we have a couple minutes left until Ham Nation starts. Yeah, and I'm going to do my best to find that wire winder, or at least the one I used. Uh, so Paul wants to know where we found the parts to, to build this uh, 9 to 1. And I have sourced them from uh, many different places, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, Unfortunately, too many places. Yeah, kind of quite a few places. But, uh, you know, uh, this is, I'm, I'm not trying to sell you on a, a car antenna or a car antenna, as we call it. Uh, but any kit that you buy for 49 to one, you'll probably follow the same instructions. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what it comes down to is, is the parts being in a convenient location. Instead of you having to buy 20 toroids, (laughs) uh, you're buying one instead of buying, uh, you know, uh, 150 feet of wire when you only need 65, you're, you're buying 65. Uh, same thing with the magnet wire too. Right. And, and basically, basically reduces the cost. Now, let me look up the wire winder real quick. Antenna wire. I, I see it every once in a while. It's like Thingiverse. It's on Thingiverse. That's where I found it. Yeah. I think it's under antenna winder. Yeah, it's it's. you have to ask for the right thing. Sometimes you can I found it. ham radio. Are you already? Dang, you're fast. Boom. Here you go. Fast. That's the wire winder that Chuck was just referencing a little bit ago. And... Uh, that will do it. I was using a different one, though. I was using these ones, and I like these ones a lot. Uh, what about the ground side of the BNC? The the ground lug, the counterpoise. Oh yeah, you didn't? Did you did you solder it to the ground lug? Yeah. You oh, did you? Nope, you're right. Nope. Hey, thank you, Bill. <laughs> There was one thing I was missing there was that. So what I'll do here real quick is uh, I'll just show you. Uh, I took the camera down. Uh, there, so there's this ground lug here. <laughs> that, thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. And that's why I should have tested it. Uh, good awesome. Eyes. Good eye. Good eye. So there's this ground lug right here, right? And that's not hooked to anything. And that's the actual ground lug that the counterpoise should also hook to, right? And so what I will do real quick is I'll grab a piece of antenna wire or I suppose I could do magnet wire too. And I'll just uh, make a small link here. So, so they're all connected real quick. Put, Give me just a me, second. Put here. me up there and I'll show them the link. I think yes, I thank you. Uh, I, there was always something, right? <laughs> did you guys look right by my finger there? Um, Hold on. Sorry about that. There you go. On the, uh, it, it's hard to see it, but there's a, there's a, like a washer in it. And I bent mine over so it was make it, it made it easier. And it's, it's right there. You can't see it though. Sorry. Here's what I'll do. I need to. I need to find some wire. He just forgot to. Uh, yeah, that was my bad. But hey, got, again, well, we got. Well, you had problems with that wire, so that kind of messed you up. You have to figure yeah, it I think out that's what me up. But it it's. Together. I would be like, why is this not working? Thanks again. I appreciate that, Bill. It's awesome when somebody like sees that and and kind of steps in. I thought for a minute, I'm like ground. I'm like, I did it. What are you talking about? And I'm like, no, I didn't do it. I'm almost to my new role. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, what have you been using for for? This is just Radio Shack. Oh, all right. I bought this back in my CB days. 
I was doing a lot of CB stuff. Give me just a second here. You're on solo. So uh, I I actually turned. Ape said he uh, he made some contacts on FT8 today on 10 meter, but I didn't hear anything. No. Uh, no. I I really think that uh, 10 meter a vertical works better on 10 meter. Although, well, when it's marginal, maybe. Well, I'm just I'm just going by a friend of mine that that I used to chat with all the time. He was he was always hearing it, and I never heard it, and that was the only difference. And I've got I've got three elements on ten, so I guess if I'm at the right angle, it should be better. That's a great suggestion there too by uh, Chris. As eighteen gauge doorbell wire works in a pinch or a fine substitute if you don't have magnet wire. Oh hmm. yeah, as, as long as it's uh, yeah, because it's it just, needs, right, to, it just kinda... needs to be um, solid core, right? I bought a yeah. bunch of solid core from Radio Shack when they went out of business. Little little small stuff that technically I could use for that actually. Hey, you know what? I got a Goodwill today. It wasn't Radio Shack anything, but um, I got a transistor tester today at Goodwill for two dollars. Nice. <laughs> I saw it. It looked pretty cool. Yeah, Don. I'm, that's my next. My next element's going to be ten, Don. All right, this is a little bit rough, but I just wanted to, I'll go back and fix it. Yeah, it'll still work. Uh, so I just took this wire here, and I went between the counterpoise post and that actual ground terminal that he was talking about, and I soldered them together. So now that should be better. I'm sorry, it's blue on blue. I should have used like red or something so you could see it. Um, there you go. Is that better? Yeah, you can kind of see it, yeah. Kind of see it. Let me take that piece of solder off right there, boom. So, I mean, that's it. Um, we're we're about three minutes out. Anybody got any questions? What thickness well, solder well, do you prefer to use? Teal says that stranded is okay for tor for roids also, but the problem with stranded, it doesn't it doesn't keep its shape sometimes. That's that's the reason they use the solid core. I'm gonna go test this again tomorrow. See, but yeah, see you, how can, it works. you can use any wire. It doesn't really matter. Thanks again, Bill. I appreciate that. AEC seven SR. Uh, and I think I think that's a new name here in the chat. So uh, welcome to the channel. We really, really appreciate you being here. Uh, and I guess we're going to say our finals here because we got about Ed, three minutes. Uh, what you got there? Used, this is Teflon coated. This this won't this won't, this won't this won't melt. But it's hard to find and super expensive. James says that was great. So James, I really appreciate it. I, um, the stream turned out really well. I'm I'm happy with how the progression of the stream and you guys got to kind of watch the live build. Yeah, only two um, thumbs down. The haters. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, it's cool. I'm not worried about that. Uh, and then uh, I just want to say thank you guys all again. Uh, so if uh, if not, give me a one in the chat. I'll wish you 73s, and then we'll go watch Ham Nation, yeah. which is pinned above. And uh, Dan, uh, local host, uh, thanks again for uh, for helping me out with the print. Uh, mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna do well. Where's those ones? Where's those ones? Oh, man. It's Don, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Joe <laughs> Brett. Thank you, Don. Uh, Andy, thank you very much. And Bill, I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, he was a really good help. Without Bill, we wouldn't have finished it. And I undoubtedly would have looked silly later down the road. Uh, Mike, Dan, and uh, local host, Before thanks again. Phil, and we got uh, Andy. We got Jeff Parent. Thank you for being here, Jeff. I think you're new as well. Welcome. Uh, Amateur Radio on the Air, John. Thank you very much. Uh, James, KI5OEB. And we got Chris, KC3PIB. Good contact the other day. We were potaing it up. And uh, and uh, I think that's about it. Christiana, thank you so much. I'll check my email here in just a few minutes. I appreciate you. And uh, Brian, W4SCE. Guys, head on over to Ham Nation and have a good one, everybody. Later T-Ray, T-Ray, I don't forget you either, T-Ray. You should have got, you got your shirt by now, T-Ray. If you didn't, let me know. And Covain, have a good one. 70s.